12 years ago, if you had told me that I was going to grow up to be an artist, I would have cried. Because this was my image of an artist. The artist was synonymous with struggling and starvation. It was representative of alcoholism and depression. And most of all, it represented poverty. And I come from a working class background. And I was the first of my family to go to the, one of the top schools in Barbados, go Kisi. Right. And <laughs> I was the first to graduate from university. So there was no way that I was going to become a poor artist. There was no way. And I fought it. And I fought it. I studied everything under the sun except art. And eventually I gave in. And in 2009, I quit my job and decided to become a full-time writer. And I wish that I could tell you that I went on to write this great Caribbean novel. And I got this huge publishing contract. And... You know, I was doing book tours and I made so much money, but the truth is, eight months after I quit the job, I still hadn't written one word. And four years later, it was four years of rejection letters, unreturned emails and calls, failed meetings, failed projects, countless writing teams. And some days I cannot even afford to buy a pack of chips from the supermarket. And this year I decided that I was going to give up. And then payday happened. And suddenly all of the dreams that I supposedly had in 2009 seemed to come true. And I was all over the place. I was in all the papers. All the, like, check this out. Check this out. <laughs> Barbadian Filmmaker wins big at TNT Festival. Payday films still reaping success. $6,000 closer to the one-way reality ticket. Barbadian Filmmaker wins, biz, fi wins big. Film writing pays off. And this is my favorite, Shakira gets payday. <laughs> and Shakira born is living her dreams. And I watched this all as if it was happening to somebody else. And I cannot understand. I was so confused because it seems like everything I wanted was coming true, but yet something wasn't adding up, and that was my bank account because I was still broke. And I couldn't understand it because this is the damn curse of the starving artist. I don't know if I'm supposed to say damn, so I'm sorry, Maria. Um, this is the curse of the starving artists, and I cannot understand why it is that it was defined as a success. These are wealth words, and yet I was still broke. And honestly, like my dream was to be able to provide for my family and be able to fly off to Europe and write a book or a screenplay and come back. And you know, no, I'm still, you know, the media is telling me I'm a success, and I'm still struggling. Like I, I even took a picture of my gas tank over half, because that just don't happen. That just don't happen ever. So I was talking to somebody about this success, and he said, yes, payday is a success. I said, but I have no money. And he said, who does? And that, that caught me off guard. Who does? I, I don't understand why I decided to define my wealth solely because of what was in my pocket. And honestly, that caught me off guard and I realized that I had to redefine what wealth and success meant to me as an artist and an entrepreneur. And so previously success to me was basically how much money I had in my pocket or how much money was in a bank account. And I realized that was a very, very, very narrow definition of success. Because what company makes money within the first two months of operation? You know, what company defines themselves by their cap statement of cash flows? So why did I do it? If you're a new company, you, you go to people and you say, um, you know, I have, I, they focus on their sales, their projected income, their forecast. You know, why didn't I do that? So I realized that if we don't value the services that we provide and the needs that we satisfy, then others can easily exploit us. And guess what? <laughs> Art does not depreciate in value. <laughs> and And so if, if, if a company could say, well, I have a cash flow deficit, but I have X product and it's projected to have X sales, and along with the value of our infrastructure, we have hired a team of qualified experts, then I can say, well, although I have a cash deficit, I have a feature film that's been out for seven weeks and it's already been recognized worldwide and projected to be shown in at least four more countries this year. And although I have, although along with the value of the equipment, 
I have a team of qualified experts. So I realized that I had to change my perception. And when I changed how I thought and what I said, and I, it changed how I acted, and that's how I was perceived. And I think that this is something that everyone has to do. We have to really redefine what we think is success and what are our assets. What assets do artists and entrepreneurs have? We have a wealth of ideas. Napoleon said that earned riches and achievements all begin with an idea, and we have a wealth of them. And we put them out there for public consumption without knowing if it's going to be good or bad, but it will be criticized. And the, we have, the companies have properties, but we have intellectual properties. I have a wealth of non-real estate. Um, we have a cultural product. We have products that bring wealth to our country through exportation and preservation of culture. There is wealth in attitude. There is a great value in the ability to work with several types of idiot. <laughs> we have a wealth of courage. Again, we bring these products and we throw them out there and there's some people who never take that step and never take that journey because they're afraid of being broke. But guess what? <laughs> we know what it feels like. So <laughs> we laugh in the face of empty pockets. <laughs> and there's, we have a wealth of resilience. We never fall down, we always fall up. So now I don't say that I am broke. I say that I am currently investing in my future. <laughs> <laughs> so. so what now? What now? Um, I think this is a very exciting time for Barbados. The, cultural in the value of the cultural industries in 2009 when I first got my job has increased. I think um, this picture was taken the day that the cultural industry bills was passed and it the val there is some value in that bill. It provides some benefits for those who are working in the creative industries. And it is not perfect, but it's a step. And it's a step in the right direction. And it's a step that we need to take advantage of to go towards our destination while the elevator is being fixed. And I think that we need to change the way how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive our business and how we perceive our art. And we need to create a, val a system and a society who who believes in the value of art and the appreciation of art and not cultivate a industry of talented artists who still live at home with their mothers. <laughs> and I think that we just need to change our perception. We need to just seize the title and we need to break this curse. So we are not aspiring, upcoming, we are not struggling, we're not starving. We are simply filmmakers, musicians, painters, uh, artists. We need to just seize that title and break the curse. <laughs>